Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, you know, the Bible tells us that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, reigns above all. And as we approach our study this morning, we are going to see exactly why that is. Now, this is going to be the conclusion of our review in the book of Hosea today. And so we're going to cover chapter 7 all the way to the end of the book, chapter 14. And if you have read these chapters, you read them hearing the tone of a prosecutor making his closing arguments. Yet at the same time, you hear the judge announcing a guilty verdict. So again, these are very stern words. We could sum them up by reading chapter 12, verse 6, where the Almighty says, Therefore turn thou to thy God, keep mercy and judgment, and wait on thy God continually. In verse 9, he says, I am the Lord thy God. In verse 10, he says, I've spoken to you by the prophets. In chapter 14, verse 1, he says, O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen, bind thy iniquity. But because you refuse my hand of mercy, judgment is upon you. And so going back to chapter 7, verse 2, he says, you consider not in your hearts that I remember all your wickedness, but the wickedness that you have committed is before my face. In verse 7, he says, You have devoured the judges that I have appointed unto you. They speak the words of truth that I have given them to tell you, yet because you hate the truth, you have devoured them as a young lion would devour its prey. He says in verse 13, Woe unto you, for you have fled from me. Destruction unto you, because you have transgressed against me. You have spoken lies against me. And notice verse 16. He says, you return, but not to the Most High. You go back to your traditions, back to your customs, thinking that salvation lies within what you do for me. Yet you do not return to my truth. You continue to adulterate yourself with the pagan nations around you. He says in chapter 8, verse 4, you've set up kings, but not by me. You've made princes unto yourself, but I knew nothing of it. He says in verse 8, Israel is swallowed up. And now because of this, you will be among the Gentiles. You will be treated like a pagan. Chapter 9, verse 7, the days of visitation are come. The days of recompense are come. The prophet among you who should be speaking my truth speaks only lies. He is a fool. The spiritual man is mad. And this is speaking of a state of mind. Because being a spiritual man, he should be speaking truth, yet he speaks lies. He is a madman. For the multitude of thine iniquity and the great hatred that you have toward my truth. In verse 15, he says, Because of your wickedness, I will drive you out of my house. I will love you no more. In verse 16, he says, you will bear no fruit. Verse 17, my God will cast you away because you did not hearken unto him, and you will be wanderers among the nations. Chapter 10, verse 13, you have plowed wickedness. You've reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies because you trusted in your own ways. In chapter 11, verse 1, he reminds them not to despise his chastisement because there was a time when Israel was a child that he did love them and he brought them out of Egypt, out of persecution, out of slavery. Yet, he says in verse 7, my people are bent to backsliding from me, to turning against me, following the ways of the pagan nations. And so again, as we read these passages, it reminds us of that, of a closing argument, the final statement before judgment. And even though the sentence is about to be handed down, he says with a heart of love, 
in chapter 12, verse 6, turn thou to thy God, keep mercy and judgment, and wait on God continually. Chapter 13, verse 4, I am the Lord thy God. There is no Savior beside me. Chapter 14, verse 1, O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Friends, can you hear the heart of the Lord here? Forced to cast judgment, yet broken in allowing one last opportunity, one last chance for forgiveness. And yet it is as if he is saying, you've left me no other choice. Now, as easy as it is to read this with a period of history in mind for the people of that day, this is the same message that the Almighty is crying out unto us. O oh, my people, return unto the Lord thy God. And as he says in chapter 14, verse 4, I will heal your backsliding. I will love you freely. Mine anger will be turned away from you. And the last verse in the book says, Who is wise? Who shall understand these things? Who is prudent and shall know them? For the ways of the Lord are right, not your ways, but the ways of the Lord. They are right, and they are just, and my people shall walk in them. That's how they're known to be my people, because they listen not to their own hearts, but they abide in my truth. They obey my word. Oh, friend, do you hear the voice of a loving father here trying to speak truth unto a young child, a child who is rebellious in seeking to make his own way upon the earth? And yet this father, full of wisdom, foresight, and knowing the consequences of bad decisions, trying to guide his child right, yet ending with a verdict that you shall reap what you sow. If you follow my ways, my son, you will know only blessing, goodness, mercy, and forgiveness. But if you follow your own heart, if you follow your own way, you will fall therein. God has been pleading with men since the beginning of time, and he still pleads today. Turn from your wicked ways. Follow my path, even in the most difficult of times, for great will be your reward. And the greater the reward, the greater the price that must be paid to achieve the reward. The message of God is timeless, friend. We are no different from the people who lived long ago. We are bent toward backsliding. It is natural for us to reject the things of God. Yet the way of the master is to take up thy cross, to die daily to the pleasures of this world, and to follow his commandments, his statutes, his truth, with an undying perseverance that only his true followers know. Oh, friends, it is my prayer that the great judge find you not guilty but instead you would have a heart of surrender, of submission, of humility. And that as we are told in chapter 10, verse 12, that you will sow to yourself righteousness, that you will reap in mercy, that you will break up the fallow, hard ground of your heart. For now is the time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Wait not another day, friend. Let today be the day that you get serious with God and you turn back no more. Well, I love you, friends. I pray that you hear the word of the Lord today. I pray that his truth pierces your heart. And I pray that this is a monumental moment of truth in your life, that you will forever be changed and you will become the man, the woman, the boy or the girl that he has so ordained you to be. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I'll see you on the next video.